Hear Me See Me podcast is sponsored by Zenoti, the number one cloud software for salons and spas. Because when people feel good, they find their greatness. I am Stuart Roberts, and I'm really excited to introduce my new podcast, Hear Me See Me. It's just over five years ago. I did something that changed my life. What it did, more than I could have ever realised, it helped me. I have met some absolutely amazing people, some of the people that work in some of these places. Many of them are volunteers, but some of them, it is their job. I had this idea after being inspired by a guy in America I'd seen cutting hair on the streets and seeing the difference it made to the guys who were there. This is more than a job. This is a calling. Hello, this is Stuart from Hear Me See Me podcast. And today I've got a a really interesting guy. Uh, Mark Anthony Bradley is a fashion stylist. Um, We met uh, when we was introduced by Lena Headey, our ambassador, and um, um, he does some wonderful images, what I want to talk about. So it's a Sunday morning. Mark, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Stuart. Happy to, happy to be talking to you on this fine Sunday morning. He <laughs> said, <laughs> doing the audience. But yeah, it's all good. For me. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll go straight into like the bones of things, of, of, as I like to do. Um, yeah. I know you as a person, but I like to really get into understanding what makes people tick a little bit. So, so, what was your upbringing like? Where, did you, where was you brought up? I was born born and bred in London, um, and uh, I, I, I guess I sort of uh, my mother took me around, around around the country a little bit. I, I spent most of my schooling in in Wales, even though I was born in London, and um, then came back to London. Um, for my early teens, so I, my, I kind of education-wise, I was kind of all over the country, which was kind of, in a way, quite a good grounding because I got <laughs> got to meet a lot of people early on in, in my years. So uh, yeah, that's where I was kind of born and bred. Hmm. What was I? Uh, I mean, Wales is beautiful. I've been to Wales a lot. So uh, what, was I, what was it? I've been an English boy in a Welsh school. Was that? <laughs> ooh, ooh. Well, uh, yeah, it was. It was a little rough to start with. I mean, it's. Yeah. it's, it's, it's it's the obvious equation, if you like. Um, you know, English boy in a Welsh school. He's kind of uh, let's let's give him let's give him a little bit jip. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was teased a lot for my accent. Um, uh, I, I think even for my haircut when I was about, I think I, I, I had an early memory when I was about twelve was just you know. Where did, you, where did you get this Ponzi haircut, man? <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm, I think I fought my way out of that. Um, I think I earned a bit of respect as a, as, a, as, a, as a youngster just by defending myself and defending being English. But my mum's actually kind of um, Welsh anyway. So, um, so I, I have English and Welsh blood in me. So um, it, it, served, it, served, it served to suit me in both ways, to be honest. Like, I kind of managed to get away with not getting too much of a beating in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I found, to be honest, I, I, I was really badly bullied at school. But there was one really? kid. Really? Yeah, one kid. And when, when you get one kid on you, you can't. It was really funny because my sister was, was three years older. So when I yeah. was in the first year, she was in the fourth year, and she went out with the best fighter in the school. So I was <laughs> touchable, and I got a bit cocky about it. And then sort of day one of the first of the third year or something, when I realised that my sister had left school and her boyfriend as well, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I started learning to run. <laughs> I a lot of people. So you were a sprinter, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, and it's uh, it's surprising. That's that that stuff really gets you, you know, at that age. And uh, it, it it does. I mean, it, it definitely had an effect on me for a while. But I mean, luckily, I was what got me through it the most. I think was actually being good at football. Right. Um, so I think the hardest kid in the school, basically, who was a year above me kind of befriended me because I was good at football and he had he used to have somebody carrying me around I used to have to kind of they'd have a guy called I think his name was Mullins who would just be his you know his his kind of I, I guess almost like his slave it was ridiculous yeah. and he used to he used to kneel down and and pick me up and carry me from lesson to lesson just because I was friends with the hardest kid in the school 
who just breed, bred fear into the rest of the uh, of the pupils. So <laughs> I, I would say I was lucky, but I, I, I mean, I guess the guy who carried me was the most unlucky. But um, and I, I was too scared to say, to, to, you know, not get on his shoulders to be carried from lesson to lesson. So, um, but yeah, literally being good at football um, kind of got me through it. Yeah. So, I do. I, I am a bit of a soccer head. Um, I've, I've, I mean, back in the actually, back in the day, my mum, she used to go out with one of the, the Leeds players in the, in the late seventies. Oh. So f- for me, I got to go as a kid go to all the uh, Ellen Road. So, um, it's kind of in my blood, I guess, because of my because of my mum's um, relationship with one of the players back in the day. Yeah. So it, it's always stuck with me, and yeah, I'm kind of. I don't watch it as much as I used to, but no. I still have a soft spot for it, and especially Leeds. So yeah, yeah. yeah. My um, where I come from is everyone's West Ham, my right, West right. Ham, and I, I'm not a real. I'm, I like the fighting, uh, fighting sports. So yeah, uh, yeah, great football fan, but yeah, I do love watching West Ham with my boy. You know, like that. that right, yeah, that for sure. Yes. And he loves it all. And it's funny, I've got a lot of friends at the old West Ham area, so you've got the old um, nutty hooligan people, you know, that yeah, I'm sure. know all. And uh, I, 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 sort of said, I was saying to him once, I said, uh, who was the worst team to go against? Who was the worst people to fight? And he went, Leeds Police. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's I true. suppose they've got practice with the miners, haven't they, the horrible guys? <laughs> so, no, they always did have a horrible reputation. You know, a lot of these guys thought they was hard until they got to Leeds and met the police. And I don't think they realised. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Leeds fans for you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Where, where, um, so from school, where did where did you mm. where did you get into like this the sort of the world of fashion and style? And... Yeah. Well, again, again, my 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 mum always had an influence on me. She sadly, sadly passed away a time ago, but she always had um, a really good influence on me I guess she was involved in she did a little bit of modeling back in the day when she was a youngster um she loved art she loved fashion so it was a natural progression for me to kind of go that way um and I always wanted to do it start off as a mark of respect to my mum because that's 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 how it was so I actually enrolled into Gwent College of Fashion and then another course doing fashion promotion illustration fashion so it was like photography styling yeah. Um, not that styling was an actual given course as such, but it was it was just an angle into it. Because it was only, I guess, it, styling hadn't really evolved that much, or it hadn't really been a thing um, um, for that long. So it was kind of nice for me to kind of get an insight into that. But I was doing fashion forecasting, trending, um, taking my own photos, making made my own collection, I guess, and then went to Epsom left Wales and went to Epsom College of Arts right. and just I think I did a uh, yeah a degree in promotion again so again I just got to, to have a little hint of everything within the fashion world and then I just decided when I left college yeah. I decided to tap up the magazines just boldly go to the magazines and introduce myself to the world <laughs> so yeah that education wise that, that's how that all worked out yeah and it's great to have that when you're young to just have that. I'm just going to go in and let them know. Yeah, who I am. <laughs> well, that, that's what I did. And my, my, as I say, my first introduction to magazines. I mean, I was kind of, I guess, in college, as a lot of fashion students will will, will probably admit to, is that they were obsessed with ID, especially back in that day. ID was like the Bible, the style Bible, yeah. and I was just determined to be a part of that. So I kind of just boldly, kind of, you know, rolled in. Um, demanded to see um, the owner Terry Jones and um, Edward and Edward Enfall, who's the fashion director, obviously now at Vogue. Um, but and I just, I, th- I think Edward maybe said to me, um, and I, I have to thank Terry and Edward because without those two, I'd never be doing what I've done now. They they they, they were such incredible influence, influential people to me. So big th- heads up to those guys. But I, I think I mentioned Terry and Edward that I just believed I should be a part of ID. I, yeah, I mean it. It does take some. Uh, it takes some guts to go into the head of. <laughs> head of uh, but like you say, you thanks to them that you know like you, you got where you won't be doing what you are now. No, for sure, and uh, yeah, I think um, I, I basically rolled in and said that um, 
I wanted to do. I'd, I'd customized some clothes and I wanted to be a stylist for ID magazine and, and contribute. So I, I kind of naively demanded sort of having, could, could I have eight pages of fashion, please? And they were like, <laughs> Edward took me aside. I think Terry Jones was just like in shock that I'd even asked. <laughs> and Edward took me aside and said, look, Mark, this is how it works. Well, we'll you know, we like what you're doing. We'll give you a couple of pages. And I was like, oh, really? Is that it? But anyway, so I got to learn the etiquette, I guess, and yeah. went away and, and did my shoot. And I think uh, Edward probably used some of the knitwear that I customized or something. And then I think it went on from there. And I um, eventually became a contributing editor there for 10 years. So that was my real grounding into, into the fashion magazine world. Put it that yeah. way, yeah. It was, which was incredible. I'll, I'll always be grateful for that, for that grounding. Yeah, I mean, we we met firstly when uh, I was at Lena Heady's house. Uh, we were talking about the charity and that, and she introduced yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And, and then um, kindly, you came along to one of our sessions when Lena came and cut hair with me in the white chapel. Right, that's right. You know, yeah, it, it, it was. Um, it was great to have you there and to capture those oh, images, which we believe yes. kindly let us have to use as well. And uh, what was what was your? I mean, she's fantastic. To, to you know, someone, and then she was moving to America the next day, and she's that's correct. That's right? Yeah, I know. How generous is that? To come and well, she, so much. She, she? Yeah, she does that. I mean, that's 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 the thing about Lena. She's uh, she gives up so much for other people, yeah. and yeah, yeah so it's a, it's a really humbling. Um, humbling world to be around her so yeah yeah what, what was your impression of that day that day i mean i guess i mean first of all i was just really honored that that that, that you guys between you and lena had, had asked me to do it and, and i guess i haven't really grasped um you know the the importance of, of what was going on until i actually got there um i remember seeing um i mean it was a really humbling experience put it that way um, seeing these these guys that looking a little despondent, I guess, lining up to have their haircuts. You know, you can see there's a general mood of, of, of all the sadness. And then seeing and photographing the process of you guys, of you guys cutting their hair and, and giving them something was quite special. And I think a couple of those came across in the in the photographs. And mm. um, and uh, if, if we were to get, do it again, I would love to kind of get that balance of of, of seeing the joy that that, that that came after. You know, they they kind of walk in despondently, but walk out with some sort of self respect. I think and and just feeling good about themselves. They you know they've been groomed, and it's it's it's, it's just a little something to make them give them that little bit of self belief that they can, you know, that they take away, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to admit, I, I, I had a couple of watery eyes at some point, so it was kind of quite a, a really humbling experience. It really, really was. I think it's one of those things that when people see the pit, even if they saw sort of beautiful images like yours, mm -hmm. and you're in there, you don't really pick up on the emotional, the emotional content of it all. It, it's, it's true. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's something quite special. Yeah, no. Uh, totally about old Sue Sue Miller, who runs the mission, like right? bless her. Told you what to do, didn't she? Do you think? Oh, she bring the camera away from me. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> no, she's got she's so great shots of her. Did she ever let you put use them? Because I gave you a, you her email. Did she ever let you do it? Oh no. I did send them quite. I mean, as a photographer, probably would whatever happens. But they, it's kind of. Um, I think I sent her some pictures and I said, would you mind if I actually publish them in, in any way or just put them on social media? Yeah. And, and, and a simple response was, absolutely not. I looked horrendous. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I totally understand. It's kind of, you know, the thing is, if people take photographs of me, I do exactly the same. So I, I, I just hate <laughs> photographs of myself. <laughs> um, if somebody said, can I publish these? I'd be like, you're joking. You're kidding me. I can't. You know? uh, I mean, so I, I, I get it. Do you know what I mean? Everybody wants to see, be seen in a certain light. And when, you, when you're documenting on reportage, yeah. you know, doing reportage pictures, then it's, it's not always your best side, if you know what I mean. But it's yeah. you're, you know, conveying a moment in time. But... Yeah. Um, 
I, I thought she looked great, but you know, she uh, she, she firmly put me back in my seat. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with Super. Yeah, that, no, no, no one does. I've I've seen her take. There's been a some couple of big guys go at it in there, and uh, <laughs> she just between them, you know. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm not having that here, and they go, "Oh, sorry, sorry, so." <laughs> yeah, I can, I can believe it, mate. I can believe it. Totally, that's she's hilarious. A, a UFC referee, I think she's. Yeah. <laughs> Dana White needs to sign yeah. a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take her on. I mean, I started looking at following your Instagram and stuff. Yeah. And, um, what really took me? I mean, I, like I said before, I said to you before we started. I'm about mm. as uh, stylish as a breeze block, so the st- <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the stuff is not, you know. I just, yeah, I've always got haircuts for homeless t-shirts on, so I, I've got, no, I've lost any idea oh, if you have style on that. But the the images you've got that you capture with your artistic eye of mm. like empty skateboard rinks and. You know, mm-hmm. people, and I love, I'm fascinated by people, and you capture these essences of people. Um, do, do you, you, you must really enjoy doing that. Oh, I mean, it's, it's always been a bit of a passion for me. I mean, I think from from the early days, we, we, even things like gang culture, um, yeah. subcultures, I was looking at pictures by people like Derek Ridges, photographers like Derek Ridges and Gavin Watson, Um uh, that was the early sort of like early skinheads, suede heads, and the mods, whatnot. I've yeah. always been obsessed with that these these kind of trends, I guess. And the same with you know American culture, you know, like the early suit suits, you know, the uh, Afro Afri- African Americans, Mexicans, sort of rebelling against the uh, against the troops, you know, sort of in in, in the mid forties. It was yeah. it, it, wearing the suit suits. It was always I've always been fascinated by gang culture, and a lot of those pictures. Um, tend not to be they, they, they tend to be catalogued via a very simple backdrop it's more about the subject than it is about anything else yeah. and there's a gritty harsh realistic look um, to these photographs and something that's always over time without even really realizing it that's become something that um, I embodied and so when I started and then plus learning working with so many photographers over the last 20 25 years, I guess it's, uh, it's 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 had an effect on me, and I probably unknowingly kind of grasped a bit of a style that that, that does capture moments in time. I think um, as best I can, anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just whether it be uh, skateboarders, whether they're in a park or whether they're not, it's, it's something about the essence of capturing a movement or a group of people and getting off, you know, moments that 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 subliminal moments, I guess. Well, it's not just the, the, the typical shot. I'm just trying to get something a little bit different. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I, whenever I can, I, I mean, prior to COVID, I used to, I used to go to LA to shoot a lot of kids. Um, but then I'll, I'll go to Thailand if I've been to Thailand. Or where, wherever I go around the world, I'll always try and capture something. I'll go, I went to Thailand a few years ago, and so I just went to the, the nearest uh, UFC camp. To, 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 to get these kind of mixed martial artists yeah. who look amazing and are so honoured to have their pictures taken. I just can find, you know, look it up on Google, where's the nearest UFC ring or something or a fighter or a boxer or whatnot. Yeah. And so I'll just go and ask them politely if I can catch them. If they tell me to F off, then I do. Then yeah. if, <laughs> if they let me do it, then I'm... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably best to do that fairly quickly. It's true, it's true. <laughs> but most people have been uh, really amazing. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's, 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 my, that's my, my outtake on, on that. And it's, it's, it's my favourite hobby, which is now becoming something that maybe I'm... I might be taking up a lot of my time. It's, it's just taking photos because it's become an obsession. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love I love the things you do. I mean, I mean, oh, I went to Thailand and it, it's such a beautiful place. It must, you know, oh, yeah, you know, it's of course. Quite, you know, and those Mai Tai, the, when you go to the Mai Tai fights and the, you know, like, yeah. they, they, it's got such an energy about them. And, and, yeah. uh, and then, but the, next to it, then you go out and you've got these beautiful beaches and the yeah. people are beautiful, aren't they? They, they are literally they are. beautiful yeah. souls, you know. Yeah. Absolutely, the pride they have, the pride they yeah. have in anything that they do, um, yeah. And it's and as well, you said about people 
surprisingly letting you take photographs. I mean, I saw you took yeah. lots of photographs at the Euros recently. You know, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Really, they were so powerful in pictures, and it, and sometimes it amazes me that that you often would think you would get told to fuck off. You know, like there's, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, but, you know, and it, but like, people like there's something people like to have their image taken, don't they? I think, so, yeah. I mean, gen- generally they do. I mean, there's a lot of shy people out there. What I yeah. tend to normally do is is kind of get in amongst the people and and kind of maybe make it obvious that I'm taking a picture, not necessarily of them, but then I tend to, you know, get their attention, show them a picture on my camera and just say, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And yeah. most of the time they get kind of excited about it and just say, yeah, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Oh, you know, you take my picture, that's fine. But yeah, that was um, that was. I mean, it, it was it was a, it was a kind of one off. It's not it's not often England gets as far as they did um, in these competitions. So I wanted to get in there. I just I literally on the morning decided to go up to Wembley yeah. um, with a face mask on. I mean, there was a lot of people that were wearing face masks, so it was a little bit scary. But at yeah. the same time, I just I mean, I just kind of got in there. Um, and people would effectively be coming up to me in the end, or they'd say, take my picture, take my picture, I'm taking this picture. And then I just kind of, you know, some people might tell me to F off, but that's fine, you know, I'll go with the flow. It's, I don't expect everybody to be, you know, no, to, no, to be no. up for it. No. But most of the time they will, and then if somebody else, it's the same with skateboarders um, in, in L.A. Um, I used to go there with another photographer called Phil Knott, who's who... No, he gets in that bowl. You just keep thinking, who is this dude? And especially an English dude. Right? And then you sort of, you show them a few pictures and then you say, and then they, they kind of maybe like that and they're like, oh, cool, cool. And then they start doing things for you and you get moments. So I love that interaction and finding a common denominator. They're kind of, you know, they're like, oh, this crazy English dude that just came up and we love his YMC trousers or something. He's a cool dude. But it, it's lovely, and it's 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 it kind of it counteracts the kind of um, what would you call it the uh, generation gap, if you like, as well. Because I'm a lot older than some of these kids, yeah. so it's kind of it, it breaks down those barriers, and it's it's just a really again a humbling experience, and to walk away with pictures, and then stay in touch with these kids, send them pictures, and they're like. Yeah, dude, this is amazing. So yeah. I get so much, I get a kick, a massive kick out of, out of out of it. It's not just the photograph. It's then hopefully carrying on beyond that. So yeah, that's what I really enjoy. Uh, that's not that's that's good that you have that that continual contact. You know, rather than the just sure. you know, it's almost like a you're not doing one night stands. You're forming relationships. And it? That's that's exactly what it is. It really, really is. Yeah. I mean, I have. A couple of these skater kids um, um, who just kind of, uh, you know, they're probably partying at four o'clock in the morning and they're sending me pictures just because they just want to, oh, because it's something that maybe made them think of the, of the time that we share when we're taking pictures. But it's it's the same as, you know, with a couple of the UFC guys in New York, there's one in particular, I, I, I won't mention, but he's kind of, we built it, we did some pictures and he, he was, he's really sweet. You know, he's a warrior in, in the ring, but he's kind of, and he, he, you know, he's, he asked me for my opinions on things every now and then. he sends me messages and it's just, and I'm like, wow, why are you asking me? And it's, it's really lovely, you know? So yeah. I'd like to, I mean, I'm, a, I mean, I am a people's person. I do love interacting with people. And I used to be kind of quite nervous, but around people, but I think since taking up photography and, and learning from my friend Phil Knott, the photographer, to just, you know, we only live once, just, you know, interact with people as best you can. And oh, yeah. it, again, I find it so humbling. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm totally up for that. Yeah, but the biggest gift I ever had was the first day I, I went to a homeless session and cut someone's hair. And it, it's cliche, but it, it changed my life because... My, in the end, my whole direction of my life is different now. And it's because yeah. I've got a different view. I've learned so much more about people. And it's funny, I came from a place where I thought, I, at that point, I already thought I knew a lot. Yeah. I knew, I knew very little compared to, you know, like, you know, the, the what makes people tear. Um, sure. And I've learned a lot about myself over that time as well. It's, it's so true. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not just saying this, but I have, I have a huge amount of respect for what you do too. And it's, I know another guy in in, in, in LA, Sasha Brewer. Oh, um, I'm Sasha. 
You know, Sasha, you're right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. So, um, I worked with him a couple of times, and, and obviously his girlfriend or his, his partner, Kate. Yes. Um, for like years. Um, so, um, I spend a, I spend a bit of time with them whenever I go to LA, and it's yeah. the same the same as Sasha. I mean, he's you know, I just just you people like yourselves, you just have. To, to give up, it's, it's all about giving back, you know, it's kind of, and I'm learning that still now, it's just, it's yeah. about, you know, whatever we do in life, sometimes it's just, it's, it's, it's a, it shouldn't just have to be about me feeling good about doing something like that, but it generally does feel good to give a little bit something back sometimes, Yeah, and that's the way life should be, and people should be more like that, and it's just, and I'm learning, and, and I'll endeavour to do more things in the future to kind of, you know, just just to make a difference to people that need it, it's just it's a wonderful thing, and, and I commend you, amazing. Well, the thing is, it's and this is what we try and get out to people, and and they do once they come and volunteer, and you know, mm. they, they they you know they realise they get so much from it. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's not you know think you're a kind person, but you get so much from from it yourself. And then there's there's a like, I'm just, this week, I was in Peter, uh, Peterborough, and there was this guy who comes to the sessions. I've only seen him three or four times over the last two years, you know. Um, but we've got such a connection because we're both alcoholics. So when right. we, what we do, we, I cut his hair, and then we'll go off to a room and we'll have a little private chat for sort of half an hour. And I, it's just about connecting and we got there late on Wednesday and he was in he come in and he said it's Stuart not here and he was panicking yeah. and then when we pulled up and then we uh, I was in the van and then my sister was with me and she, mm. she come running across the road she went it's Stuart there <laughs> you know and it, and then it, the, the, he was so pleased to see me and he's He's going through so much at the moment, and now, unfortunately, he's now on yeah. some crack. And but we went in that room, and um, I came out feeling grateful. I yeah. came out sure. remembering our I, what I am. I, you know, I know what I am. I'm the same as him. Sure. I'm I'm sure. an alcoholic. I, I'm a I'm an ex drinker. I'm an ex drug taker. And, and and then yeah. what that does by me giving them that. Help for that half hour, yeah. Puts me in back in mind that hang on a minute, you know, I've had a bit of pretty shit there this year, and it's like, hang on a yeah. minute, you remember what yeah. you are, don't be like thinking everything's cool because it ain't never gonna be. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it totally puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Really, That's yeah. What it is. yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the petty things we complain about sometimes, yeah, it, it pales into insignificance sometimes, yeah. and you really examine it, just like, hold on a minute. You know, yeah. just be grateful for what we've got, really. And it's just, yeah, I've, I've definitely reevaluated life over the last, God knows how long, many years. You know, so yeah, I've, I've, I've got to agree with you there. Oh, mate. But did, did uh, how did how how did it affect you then? Because I mean, obviously, we we just been through the biggest pandemic. <laughs> yeah. You know, like what happened to you? What what what? How did it affect you? Well, when it first kicked off, I was, I mean, a lot of my work, I mean, it, it's affected me massively, I must say, in terms from the, from the styling point of view. I mean, I'm ticking over, but it's not like how it used to be, that's for sure. When it first kicked off, I was actually, um, I just agreed to go to New York. We used to have an apartment there, me and my partner. Um, and we were basically on route now. I was on route there, sorry. And I had three jobs lined up in consecutively over 10 days. And um, I think um, within two days of arriving in New York, all three got cancelled. It was just, it, it suddenly hits. And I was just like, wow. And I kind of come, you know, I come to terms that the jobs weren't happening and that something was going on. But I didn't, even, I didn't envisage it was going to go on like it was. You know, like most people, I thought, all right, well, you know, I've lost these jobs. It's unfortunate. Maybe they'll come back at a later period. But then it was, um, I ended up getting stuck there for three weeks. I couldn't get back home and, um, because I had to, uh, I mean, basically I wanted to come home, but the, the, you couldn't go to the airport. You couldn't bring the airlines. It was complete wow. chaos, really, in a way. Um, and then you'd... So I kind of resigned that I couldn't do anything for a couple of weeks. So I kind of sat tight and then just, I kind of, I, I 
so for me it was it was it was pretty damning but I, I i made use of the time by going to at that time you could still go on the on on the metros so i'd go into manhattan or, or walk across the bridge to manhattan sometimes and just photograph the streets because there was it was desolate like you'd never imagine you know the, wow. the you know the madison avenues and 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 the parks and stuff, Central Park was, 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 there was nobody there. It was just like an apocalyptic sort of scene. Yeah. Or I'd go to Coney Island. So for me as a photographer, there was, there was yeah. a positive, a positive, yeah. you like, in, in this, in this, in this horrible pandemic. But, um, so I just made use of the time. So it was quite, that was quite interesting. But then when I eventually got back to England, it was just, it's, um, it's, it's definitely taken its toll. It's, it's now picking up a little bit. I think it's one of those things from my from my point of view. I, I just feel like we're going to have to live with this thing. It's not going to go away. Uh, so we need to take whatever precautions we can, but carry on because you know otherwise we go into lockdown again, and it's going to it's going to ruin so many people. I mean, so many people have been ruined already. Yeah. So many businesses, young businesses, aspiring kids doing new things. Yeah. But I also I always believe in in sort of. I, th- I think, in a way, it's a, it's all, it's always feels like a, a pre-punk kind of situation where people are getting creative again, and yeah. I love that. You know, it's just I love seeing because that's what I was like when I said before when I went, went into ID, I was just a cheeky little brat who yeah. expected the world, but that's because I was really keen and I was just like determined to make my stamp, make my stamp, if you like. Yeah. So I feel like people are doing that now, and I th- I th- so I think. In all this insanity and madness, I think something quite beautiful might come out of the out of the flames. If you, if you know what I mean, I think there'll there'll be um, a revolution of fashion. Well, I mean, we're already seeing that in sustainability, fashion, people with a, you know with a, you know. I think there's, there's there's a huge a bigger a huge amount of people now buying secondhand clothes and renovating them and doing something yeah. new with them. New designers are, are, are using. Again, I think sending out scouts to find um, old vintage pieces so that they can revamp them and, and add their own stamp. So I think it's, it's great. It's just it's rejuvenation of things. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's crucial. I mean, this, this thing of sustainability, you know, it's, 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 everyone's, it's always the same thing. Human beings always get it a bit late. Don't they? It's always, yeah, sure, it's true. Pushing up and then we maybe try and like, put the fire out. You know, but yeah. it's at least try and put the fucking fire out. You know, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it's but again for me, I, I feel like it, it, we we need because it's there's so much of this sustainability. I mean, w- without that, we're getting this we're getting this kind of um, this online presence with fashion now. That, you know, I keep on seeing this digital presence, which kind of to me is is a little bit alarming because it's kind of I think it's. I might be wrong, but I read recently something. I think the likes of like Amazon are trying to set up an app to determine whether something is cool or not. I mean, where does that come from? I mean, what's that about? I mean, I may be wrong, but that's what I read recently, that they're trying to bring out an app that determines whether something is cool or not. So we're taking away the whole human element here. So yeah. I'm kind of, you know, reluctant to... to, to to, to look at it from that point of view, so I think with all this, with all this kind of digitalization and 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 I think we're, we're looking at sort of you know sort of having virtual, virtual kind of um, what do you call them uh, changing rooms. Oh, right. I mean, what's that yeah. all about? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just maybe I'm old fashioned, but I mean, I, I think I like to relate to, to the youth and whatnot, but I, I can't believe people. Will 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 go that way. I think there, need, there needs to be some sort of human interaction, or you know, I mean, of course, the world is going digital. That's what it is. But I think within moderation, anyway. Yeah, it's the same. It, it, you've got to have that human touch, that human element. For sure, for sure. And, uh, and uh, there's things that uh, I mean, the, the Amazon have opened up a hairdressing salon in London. Wow, and that's really ruffled some feathers. <laughs> well, I can I can only imagine. <laughs> but I, I sort of I, I like I like to stand back and watch all that stuff because it's you know it it's just different. Oh, you, know, think you know, and uh, yeah, it's an element you're not going to take away. You can't you can't you can't replicate what you saw, what we do. 
you can't yeah um sure. you do you know like that eye you've got you you, you can, they're not going to be able to do that you know uh, yeah, sure. please go because if they do yeah. we might as well give up you know like, no exactly that'll be it end off but i mean yeah no let, let's pray for that you know, <laughs> you know. yeah i mean it's one of those things technology of course we have to move along with it of course yeah. like, i just get it but i mean you know it's and i think things like fashion shows it's kind of you know, it was always that, that thing. Whenever I, when I when I started working with ID back in the day, I'd go to all the shows with Terry Terry Jones to to Paris, Milan, New York, and we we'd sit there. But to be honest, most you know, and I, I loved that at that time. I loved that sort of that kind of physical thing where you're seeing some like a designer's creation come to life. It was it wasn't just selling clothes. It was more. It was an experience, and it was fun to watch. But then, I mean, 75, 80% of the people are there just to, just to be seen. And it's kind of, it's just, you know, it's, it's a little showing off. It's a little peacock, you know, feathers and whatnot, um, which I kind of get, but uh, I, it just got to me in the end. And it's kind of, I don't think, you know, it's, it's not essential anymore. We don't need that. So we can cut down on things like that, you know. It's, you know. So I think we need to kind of, that, so there is a digital side that's, that will, that will you know that will help things and i understand all that and, but i just think we need to kind of still have um some human interaction otherwise i don't yeah. see future fashion going anywhere good put it that way uh, uh, well i told you this would be good because <laughs> the thing <laughs> I, I love doing this i'll tell you why i love it is because mm. like, even like say like when we met when you come to the mission yeah, you, sure. you run off and you you maybe have a quick coffee after and then bang you, yeah. don't, you don't really take the time to sit and really talk to someone or, or we're all so busy aren't we and I think sure. I've even sure. got three listeners I love doing this just because I get to talk to people for a, a decent amount of time and no, I, it's, it's good yeah, yeah. yeah I, try, I, I, try, I totally resonate with you saying I mean it's just it's you know I have you know when Lena first asked me to, to, to maybe um, that you'd invite me to come down and take some pictures again, it was just, yeah, I, I was desperate to do it because it's for me, it's again, it's moments in time, which is part of my philosophy of photography, but to then sort of meet some of these people and then meet you briefly was, was, was again, like I said before, a humbling experience. And then we get to, to do this podcast, if you like. And it's just, so we, I learned a bit more about you as well, which is great. And, and you know, I'd, I'd love to do it again. I, you know, I want to sit down to you, you know, even if it's not a podcast, we go out and have a beer or something or whatever, yeah. or a coffee or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's kind of nice. And, yeah, Lena, Lena facilitated that. So bless her, bless her yeah. socks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, nice to her, man, seriously. Yeah. Well, um, I wish you well, sir. And I will come on yeah. in uh, no, we'll do that. Let's let's oh, chat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I feel like we've got some history. There's there's some yeah. football. There's some imagery yeah. things to talk yeah, about. People things I can talk tell you that I ain't going to say on here. So there's. A... Yeah. Oh, I've got a few of those too. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. do that then. Well, yeah. thanks very much for your time, and um, you know, welcome. Uh, uh, I'll put all the links, and you know, let, get, I want everyone to see your your lovely work and everything. So bless uh, you, my friend very well known but uh, you know any kind of way has not seen it I want them to see your lovely photograph oh thank you Stuart it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. I, I was, to be honest I was, I was sweating a little bit about this I'm not very good at these things but you made me feel really relaxed and I just went went on a bit of a rant which is kind of nice you know that's all, that's all it's for <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you Stuart it's been a pleasure mate thank you it's just over five years ago I did something that changed my life what it did more than I could have ever realised. It helped me. I have met some absolutely amazing people. Some of the people that work in some of these places, many of them are volunteers, but some of them, it is their job. This is more than a job. This is a calling. <laughs>